Hey there, today I wanted to make a really quick video showing you how to detect data layer events um, with JavaScript on the front end here. So I've had to do this before um, in a situation where I wasn't able to use uh, the trigger, like a, a data layer trigger in Google Tag Manager and instead had to write the trigger myself in JavaScript. So this is essentially the, um, what's happening there. So if you need this again in maybe JavaScript that's not in Google Tag Manager, or you need to set the trigger yourself for whatever reason, this would be how you do it. So I've set up a page really quick here, just an HTML page. And what I've done is I've added a little bit of styling just to make it easier to see. Uh, and then I have two buttons here. One is going to push a data layer event that we want to detect. So the event is called detect. And then the other one is going to push a no detect data layer event. And the event's just called no detect. So what I'm gonna do here really quick is add some more details, I'm gonna change that to no underscore detect. And I'm just gonna add uh, data and just a test string here. Uh, whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to single quotes. And there we are. So now this data is going to be what we're trying to detect here. When that button is pressed, it already pushes this event to the data layer. So down here, I've written the function um, that I'm gonna walk you through really quick to show you how this works. First, I'm gonna go ahead and do a demonstration to show you that it does work. So when I, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this to clear the data layer, because I was testing. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the data layer here. And right now it's just a push function. So I'm gonna go ahead and press no detect. And when I refresh the data layer, data layer, there's the no detect event. And when I press detect, there you can see it detected it and logged something here. And it's also logged the event. And then when I go ahead and show the data layer, you'll see that there is the detect event there. So this is the functionality we're looking for. When I head back to Visual Studio Code here, I'm gonna come down to the script I've written. So the first thing I'm gonna do is define data layer as either the window or uh, an empty array, or the window.data layer if it already exists, or an empty array if it does not. Um, I also wanna mention this code's going to be on GitHub. All of, it's all commented, so you can kinda of walk through it in plain English, which is just what I'm gonna do here for you. So the next thing we're gonna do is run a function on, so this, this syntax here inside of the parentheses and then the set of parentheses at the end, make sure that this function runs right away. So what this function is gonna do is it's going to take the new, the old uh, push method. As you can see here, that's what this comment says. It takes the, act, the function um, when you push and, and sets it to the original push variable. So this is the actual push function. Then when you come down here, we're resetting the push, the push function to a new function. And so with this function, what we do is we first call the original push so that we don't affect the actual, um, the functionality that is already in place. And you can actually get rid of this if you don't want the functionality that's already in place for the data layer. But for my use case, I actually didn't want to change that functionality. I just wanted to tack something on top of it. So the next thing we're gonna do after calling this original push function is we're going to dispatch a new event. So in this case, the new event that I've called is you do new custom event, and then this one is called data layer dot push, and you'll see where we use that later. And then we feed through the object here as well. So coming down into, or so that's the only function you need to run um, on load. And then the next function that we're going to define here is gonna be called add data layer event trigger. And it's going to have two parameters, event name and the callback function that is going to be called when the data layer is event is um, is found. So the next thing we're going to do is inside this function, you're going to have an if with the type of event name and make sure that it's a string. This is just um, parameter validation right here. So if the event name is not a string and the callback is not a function, then you can see we just uh, log this error here in valid arguments provided for add data layer trigger event or event trigger and that is just not going to allow you to uh, set an invalid data layer event here trigger and so this is just some validation for the parameters now here's the actual meat of the function here uh, we're going to set a window event listener on the data layer dot push uh, event custom event so that custom event is what we defined here so every time there is a data layer event being pushed, then this event is going to fire. Now when this event fires, we're gonna go ahead and grab the event and the parameter here, and we're going to check to make sure that the detail is there. So the detail is actually the, an object with the uh, event object that was pushed. 
And then we're gonna check to make sure that the detail dot event, so this is the event name, is equal to the event name that you set for the trigger listener. And if it is, then we're gonna call that callback function that you defined up here in the parameters. And this is what you are trying, this is going to be what is triggered when you uh, detect that event. And down here, I've gone ahead and used this function, the add data layer event trigger, and I've set up something for the detect event. So the detect event, again, is just an arbitrary event that we wanted to detect. So I've set the event trigger and a callback function here that logs the event detected and also a lo logs the actual event. Um, I'll change this to event, not to cause any confusion. And I'll go ahead and save that. And then I'll go back to Chrome. I'll refresh, and again, this is the same functionality as before. If I press no detect, you can see that nothing happens, but if I press detect, then you can see there is that data passed through and the event detect. So I hope this video helped. If it did, please leave a like, subscribe, head down in the comments and to the GitHub. If you want to copy the function, it will be down there. Um, and then also I would uh, urge you to copy all of this. So if you're going to copy and paste the function, copy from this line down to here, uh, actually this entire function as well. So all the way, all this needs to be in your uh, JavaScript for it to work properly. So again, hope this video helped. If it did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.